Welcome back to the makeup chair. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this super easy look. I cannot stress how simple this look is. I know it may look complicated to beginners, but I promise you it's so quick and easy to do. You can probably get this done in like two minutes with very little skill. So for anyone who is more advanced, here's a quick and easy look. And for anyone who's a beginner, you are going to nail this. I promise you. Now, if you enjoy tutorials like this and you are new here, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started in creating one of the easiest looks ever. So as always, we're gonna start by applying an eyeshadow primer all over the lid. This is gonna give our eyeshadow something to hold on to, but also because my eyeshadow primer is slightly tinted, it's going to create a blank canvas for us to work on as well. The first eyeshadow that I'm taking is a lighter shade, so something that's about one shade lighter or more than your skin tone, and I'm going to be applying this with a fluffy brush. What I'm going to do with this, and I'm going to sweep this all over the lid and right up to the brows. Now, if you have hooded eyes, you want to avoid your hood. You want to keep this mostly on the lid and then the brow bone, but for everybody else, you can just kind of apply it everywhere. This is just going to lift and brighten the eye also kind of setting the primer that we've already applied, if it needs setting, while just giving us an overall bright appearance across our lids. Next, I'm moving on to a mid-tone. So this is about one shade darker than your skin tone. You can always use the contour or your bronzer that you apply on your face if you want to, and also if you don't have sensitive eyes. We're applying this using that same fluffy brush, starting on the outer edge and then working up into the crease or the socket. Now you can actually just do this with your eyes closed. You're just gonna feel for the shaping of your eye. You're gonna work into that crease to create some definition and also on that outer edge of the eye. The only place you really want to avoid is right underneath the brows and also on the inner two thirds of the lid, but you don't have to be so precise about it. It's just a lot of movement, a lot of swirling, I'm working this over and back into the socket. Make sure you have only picked up a very small amount of shadow and keep the brush nice and light as you work this product in. You don't have to be too precise though because this is only one shade darker than our skin tone and so we don't have to be too worried about harsh lines. It should be nice and light. Another thing that I like to do is take a little bit of my blush, particularly if I'm using a matte blush on my face, and apply this on the outer edge into the socket line on the outer third of the lid. What this does is it kind of brings all the tones together. It's great for like bridles as well. It kind of brings the entire look together while adding a little bit more definition and depth into the eye. Moving on, I'm going to apply a deep shade. I'm not using black. I'm actually gonna be using a deep brown because I want it to be a little bit more wearable. And I'm going to apply this across the lash line using a lip brush. I know it's a little strange to use a lip brush, but I really like the effect of using a lip brush. It kind of glides on, similar to applying like a cream, but because it's a powder, it kind of sits and blends a little bit better using a lip brush instead of like a little pencil brush. I have a little bit more control and I just like the way it feels. It kind of just glides. Next, I'm going to apply invisible liner. This is applying liner really, really close to the lashes to add some depth and darkness there without actually creating like an eyeliner look. If you can't do this, don't worry. You can actually skip this step altogether, but invisible liner just creates a little bit more definition. I also love this brush. It just makes things so much easier because it's slightly bent and it's really, really, really tiny so I can get right in there really close to those lashes. So that's our eyeshadow done. I'm going to apply a brown pencil to the outer third of the inner rim or waterline, and then also into the upper waterline as well. Now, if you can't do the upper waterline, don't worry. I know it's quite ticklish. My best advice is to always look in the opposite direction from where you're applying. So if you're applying on the outer edge, move your mirror over to the far side, and the further away the pencil is from your pupil, the less ticklish it feels. I'm also going to apply a lighter shade to the inner two thirds of the lower waterline. Now this actually melted because the heater that I have going constantly because I'm always cold, but you just want to apply this on the inner rim of the eye and kind of the inner corner. 
You can pick whatever shade works for you, whether you want to go lighter or you want to just kind of go for nude. It's totally up to you. Okay, moving on to a mascara, and I want to share some mascara tips and how to use an eyelash curler as well for anybody who doesn't know or maybe just wants to recap. So I'm just applying a very thin layer of mascara, but I did have somebody say to me recently, my mascara on one eye looks great, and then on the other eye, it doesn't. And I was like, okay, which eye is it that you're having a problem with? So it's always the opposite eye from your hand. So your dominant hand, say if it's your right, then your right eye mascara technique is perfect. But when it comes to the other eye, it can be slightly off and she couldn't figure out why. And I was like, because you need to flip your hand over. The mascara one that she was using was going from thin to thick and she was applying the thicker to the inner edge on the opposite eye. Best way to do this is to flip your hand around, making sure that that inner part is always pointing to the inside of the eye. So whether you are left-handed or right-handed, when you're doing the opposite eye, you need to flip your hand over. Unless you're ambidextrous, which I always have a problem saying that word, and then you can just use your other hand to apply it on that eye. Now I'm going to curl my eyelashes, but first I'm just going to make sure that my lashes are nice and dry. I also want to make sure they're still kind of soft as well because we don't want them to crack and break. And then I'm going to grab my eyelash curler. So what I typically do is I open it as wide as possible and I lay it on the outer edge of my cheek and kind of feed the lashes inwards as I look down in a mirror. Worst thing to do is just to come at your eye with an eyelash curler. You're likely to kind of pinch your eye in some way. So kind of lay it on the outer edge and then feed your lashes into it. Then what I do is I slightly press this against the lid. And what this does is it kind of tilts those lashes upwards. It allows me to get really close to that lash line. Just make sure you are not pinching your upper waterline. It's very uncomfortable. Make sure you're only catching the lashes. Now, the longer you hold it for, the longer it will hold. I was trying to calculate this, but I think it just varies from person to person. But I was like, okay, if we hold it for like 30 seconds, how many hours do we get out of 30 seconds? Now my eyelashes tend to drop, which is really unfortunate because I wear glasses, which is why I always have an eyelash curler either in my handbag or in my car so that I can recurl my lashes while I'm driving not while I'm driving, <laughs> before I start driving, I can give them a quick curl because then I have to put my glasses on and there's nothing worse than having your lashes constantly touching your glasses. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable to drive in. And actually speaking of eyelash curlers, I can never get the inner part of my eye to curl. So seven years ago, I pulled out my lashes. This is a reenactment from seven years ago. I pulled out a bunch of lashes on that inner edge as I was using my eyelash curler. So it's very important to use it very carefully. I had moisturizer on my hand as I was squeezing my lashes and pulled a bunch of my lashes out. It was like getting my eyes waxed. It felt so strange. Now they did grow back, thankfully, but ever since I have never been able to get them to hold a curl. They're constantly dropping no matter what I do. So once my eyelashes are curled, I then go in with a little bit more mascara on the upper and the lower lashes. And I will also be applying some falsies, which I talked about in my previous video, if you want a little bit more details on that. But I do like to use my eyelash curler again after I've applied my falsies. What this does is it kind of sandwiches them together. Now this can be a little tricky. You kind of have to feed the lashes in, particularly if you're using massive lashes like I'm doing here. So keeping it as open as you can, I kind of feed the lashes in. I look around to make sure that all the lashes are in there. And then I do the slightest, ever so slightest little squeeze. We're not pressing down. We're literally just, just, doing, just doing a little hug so that they hold together. And then you want to open up the eyelash curler very, very carefully and make sure that the glue hasn't attached in any way to the eyelash curler. So I'm kind of pushing downwards just to make sure because there's nothing worse than pulling off your fake ones after you spend ages applying them. And then there you go. That is the finished look. I really hope that you guys recreate this one. It's simple, it's quick, it's easy, it's very effective. I feel like this look is, is kind of, kind of dramatic. Are we saying that? Maybe, possibly. But it's also quite wearable at the same time. Depends on the lashes that you use. So the more dramatic the lashes, the more dramatic the look. 
but I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely let me know if you've recreated. I would love to see it and I would love to see you in another video really soon. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. You're doing the best you can and I'll see you next time.